First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth, sincerity, and wholeheartedly. Shalom to the Akwaf, which is the women believers, Shalom to you. And I just want to get into, you know, the simplicity of Yahweh Shai, which is a stumbling block. You know, most people think that the truth got to have some type of gimmick, some type of inner entertainment value. So, you know, the Lord just want his word to gravitate you to come in. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm probably predominantly going to stay in this chapter because this really hits the point. You know, I always say this when I be downtown, if I was LeBron James that whole downtown would be filled listening to what I, you know, have to say. But since I'm just a regular man who the Lord gave the Holy Spirit to, you know, people just look at me like I'm crazy. But so anyway, it say first Corinthians one and 18 say for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of the most high, you know, and, and we hope to be saved. That's why we have to endure to the end. But the simplicity of Yahweh Shai is it's all about the cross. It's all about what he done on the cross to reconcile us back to our power, our father, Yahweh. All right. So the cross is not a small thing. That's really what it's all about. All right. If you want to be technical by him going on the cross and dying for the sins of all of Israel, but the elect first. That's when the Holy Spirit was be able to come down. That's when you go to Revelation 5 and talk about how he loosed the seals on the scriptures, which give us the 100 percent understanding. All right. So it's very, very big what he done for us on the cross. All right. So it says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And that's the, you know, as, as I go to Luke 16 and 8. It say for the children of the world is wiser than the children of the light. All right. So it's talking about Esau, Edom. All right. This is his philosophy. This is his so-called understanding and knowledge that he, you know, the wine of his fornication that is on all flesh, you know, his science, his education system, you know, all that's going to come to naught. And all we have to do is preach through us preaching the prophecies coming to pass. When you go to second Thessalonians two, it talks about how he's going to destroy him with his mouth and then destroy him with the brightness of his coming. So right now it's spiritual and it's verbal and it's about to become physical real quick. All right. So it said, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not the most high made foolishness, the wisdom of this world. So, you know, going to school. All right. Going to school and thinking that you about to um, become somebody. And guess what? You might actually go to school. I mean, I know people who I have friends in the world who went to college, who graduated on the honor roll the, the whole four years or six years, however long they went. And then they ain't even get the job for what they went to school for. All right. They working at telemarketing and, you know, other things you know, a, a factory. But the point that I'm making is that so you can go to school, you can get a piece of paper to say that you're so bright and so smart and that you got credentials. But what is that going to do when all hell break loose? The quote, the, the scripture that I always quote is Proverbs 11 and four. All right. It say that righteous, I mean, riches profit not in a day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. So you can't learn righteousness in school I mean, in these damn colleges. All right. But from the scriptures, that's all we need. All right. So it says. For after that, in the wisdom of the most high, the world by wisdom knew not the most high. Right. Because everything is against. All right. The foundation of this world is upside down because the wicked is given. I mean, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So first of all. You think Esau Eden was about to teach the Lord? The scriptures say that he come down with great wrath because he know he had but a short time. So I'm talking about the ones who actually run this world, the banker families. 
they know the truth. They know who we are. They know who they are. All right. They're they're not going to, you know, teach the truth. They're not going to tell us the truth. What they're trying to do is get away from the truth because they understand that the truth is their destruction. So it says, for after that, that in the wisdom of the world, wisdom of the most high, the world by wisdom knew not the most high. It pleased the most high by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So that's what I'm talking about, the simplicity of Yahweh Shai. Now, the scripture said when you go out there, Psalms 34 and 7, the angels encamp around those that fear him. All right. And then when you go to Acts 5, it talks about that if this word, if this um word be of the most high, you cannot fight against it or overthrow it. So if you have the right intentions, you're going to be all right. The Lord is going to fight for his. All right. So it, it's a light thing, as I say in Isaiah chapter 49, verse six It's a light thing, you know, to raise up the children of Jacob. So when you go out there and deal with the elements, that is hard. But after you do it for a while, it becomes easy. All right. And so the point is, is that the simplicity of Yahweh Shai is the preaching of the cross. All right. Preach it to save them that believe. Stick into the doctrine. See, you got this group called One Body in Yahweh Shai trying to be deep. Now they saying that Moses didn't part the Red Sea. They first started off saying Yahweh Shai ain't do the um, miracles. That's witchcraft. When the scriptures literally said, that's how you know that the spirits is back. The scriptures literally said that that the, the, the Pharisees were saying that he do these miracles through Beelzebub. So basically saying that he was dealing with Satan. So that's what these people today that's on the earth, one body in Yahawashai, the, uh, the 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 leader, Jephthah, he's a demon. But he's saying Yahawashai ain't do the uh, miracles. That's rich crap. Now he's saying uh, Moses ain't part of the Red Sea. This dude is gone. And that's a, that should make you fear because... That's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord, man. Because he, you think he ain't going to pay for that? The scripture talks about that death and life coming the power of the tongue. This dude is speaking blasphemy, and he's actually doing the sin that you cannot be forgiven. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But, of course, he's an Israelite, so he's going to be forgiven eventually, but he's going to serve the same fate as Esau Edom. All right, so just preaching and sticking to the doctrine. That's the simplicity of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But nobody, you know, you people want to be deep. People want to justify their own self. People want to be somebody. When the Lord said he's going to rise you up in due time. All right. He that exalt himself shall be a base. He that is a base shall be exalted. All right. So it said for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks after wisdom. So I love the scripture right here because, you know, people be wanting to see, well, I, I, back in the day, I put it like that. Back in the day when I used to come across people, they used to say, well, if God is real, why God just won't show itself? Like he going to come down here to your non-important ass and show you that he's real. Well, that's why when you go to Romans 1, it talks about how you see the Godhead. You see the sun. You see the moons. You see the stars. You see the, ch the seasons change like clockwork. Men can't do that. Man didn't create that. So you are without excuse. All right. So that's the ones of the circumcision. Salakia. All right. Those are the ones of the circum um, circumcision to talk about the Jews. Because Paul is talking about, you know, those um, Pharisees because and, and Sadducees, chief priests, because they was always talk about if you just be the son of man, do this, do that. But he did it. You just didn't believe. All right. Then you got the Greeks, which is the Gentiles, who didn't know they were they was um Israelite, you know, Gentiles, because you know, uh Antiochus Epiphanes, he made a decree that you ain't allowed to call yourself a Jew or keep the laws or you'd be put to death. So what you think happened over generations? After that generation died, then they their kids was born, and guess what? They was calling themselves Greeks and doing the customs of the Greeks. But it say the Greeks seek after wisdom. Because when you go into the history of the Greeks, they was into like, you know, mathematics, mathematics, I said mathematics, <laughs> mathematics and architecture and, and medicine and things like that. So they they into the wisdom, not the wisdom of the scriptures, though. Talk about like, you know, because this whole chapter talking about how, 
you know, the preaching of the cross, basically preaching his word, not trying to be all fancy, not talking about the wisdom of this world. It's foolishness. All right. So that's our people. Our, now you got people who actually you got Israelites, man, talking about trust the science, man. Come on, man. That's what I'm talking about. So I understand why the Lord said two thirds of people must die. So people are um, taking on to the philosophy of Esau, Edom. So anyway, I say, but we preach Hamashiach crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block and unto the Greek foolishness. So that's our people. All right. Two thirds to be exact. Zechariah 13 and eight. All right. So they think that just preaching a word, it ain't enough. All right. And then some think that preaching a word is foolishness. But when you go to first Corinthians four, it talks about how he not set the apostles last. All right. That that it'll be that matter of fact, let me get there real quick. So it said, for I think that the most high have set for forth us, the apostles last as it were appointed to death. But we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. So that's why they look at us like a fool. It said, for we are fools for Hamashiach's sake, but ye are wise in Hamashiach. We are weak, but ye are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. All right. So I want to get into the word fools. I think it's Mysterion. No, matter of fact, um, that's not it. Where's the mysteries at? Did I read it? Did I go over it? Nope. I'm going to read fools anyway. So Moros, Moros, and it says foolish. Okay. Equivalent to without learning or what? Well, that's how they look at us. We, they look at us as imprudent without forethought or wisdom. They always want to say, go get a job. All right. Do something with your life, not understanding that we're doing something that's going to bring eternal life. All right. For your for your information. All right. So anyways, um, going back. But the word um, mysteries is mysterion. But anyway, it say, but we preach Hamashiach crucified unto the Jews, stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Hamashiach, the power of the most high and the wisdom of the most high. Because the foolishness of the most high is wiser than men and the weakness of the most high is stronger than men. So the things that we do is wiser than men. This is the weakness of the most high by us preaching. All right. And that's not even weak because guess what? It's confounding the whole world. Two thirds getting confounded, the wicked of this world being confounded. All right. Through our preaching, because the scripture said, speak unto my people, the words of prophecy, which I will put in your mouth. So we speak the Lord's words. That's um, second, um, Edgerus 15 and one. All right. So it say for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Going back to my first um, initial statements in the beginning of this video. If I was LeBron James, Jay-Z, somebody that Jake look up to, if, if, if he if he called those type of men, Floyd Mayweather, if, if he called those type of rich Jakes who got some popularity in the world to preach the word, it would be way more Israelites that believe. But see, he said not many. Wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. All right. So he called a lowly. Matter of fact, that's the next scripture. Yep. But the most high have chosen the foolish things of the world, talking about us because we're lowly. All right. He 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 chose a person that's a regular person and work, work a nine to five or a person who was in the streets thinking that he was doing something. You know what I'm saying? He put the he put the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in those type of men. Men that people grew up with. That's why Yahweh Shah said that a, a, a prophet is not without honor, but set in his own country. So your friends and family and where you grew up at, they look at you like, oh, man, I know him, man. He, we used to play basketball together. We used to, we used to sleep with girls together. You know, all that stuff. All right. They don't respect you as a man of the Lord. All right. But it said, but the most I have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the most I have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And that's talking about Esau, Edom, because when you look at it, but like, how is this man going to go down? All right. It said, rise up. All right. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. 
Uh, damn, not yep. <laughs> uh, what again? Come on, Satan, man. Oh, that's what it's doing. It's correcting me. Uh -uh. So it says, therefore, wait ye upon me, save ye how until the day that I rise up to the prey for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, which is righteous judgment, even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. All right. So, it says, yeah, and the things which are not to bring to not the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Hamashiach Yahweh who of the Most High is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And that's going, and that fact, I'm going to end on that scripture, which is one of my favorites. I say that almost every video, but hey, it is what it is. I got a lot of scriptures that's my favorite. <laughs> God, go, mm, come on. My, my, oh my goodness. My stuff have never did that before, but you know, Satan always got to try to do something. So it say, thus saith Yahweh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Yahweh, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith Yahweh. So be happy that you know him, man. Be happy that the Lord had grace and mercy upon you to give you his word. And that it didn't take no gimmicks for you to stay. It ain't take no gimmicks for you to be able to come into the sanctuary of the Most High. That's why this man, Yahweh Shai, should be greatly praised. So hopefully this video is edifying. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. And Shalom.